Right now, let's meet our King of the Hill participants and the field for today's telecast. Our first King of the Hill participant, number one, Johnny Petraglia Open winner, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. His opponent earned his King of the Hill berth with a win in the IOF Foresters Open from Clermont, Florida, Norm Duke. Now, the opening match of our championship round features a touring pro after his first title from Munster, Indiana, Eugene McCune. His opponent is a former player of the year, a 12-time titleist who qualified third for the championship. Hello again to Norm Duke. The number two seed needs to finish first or second today, become the 18th millionaire in PBA history from Buffalo, Tom Baker. Qualifying as our tournament leader is this man you already met going for his third title here, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Well, Nelson, King of the Hill is back, and it's always been exciting. You're right, Chris. 1993 was our last King of the Hill match. You know, if somebody can win all four weeks, there would be an $80,000 paycheck awaiting them. Now it's Duke and Walter Ray Williams, Jr. And it's winner take all. $10,000 for the man that uh, has the highest score in... Uh, this game on the championship pair, two old foes, two talented professionals, and two of uh, the five bowlers that were very loose in warming up. Let's see how that uh, bodes for them now. Extremely well. Really good start by Duke. Uh, obviously, both players lose coming off victories in the past couple of weeks, and um, two of the top players in the world, Walter Reed, ranked number one, Duke number four. It's a 10-pin on the uh, right lane. Incidentally, there is standing room only crowd at this uh, bowling establishment named ABC North. You own this? <laughs> I was asking you for a loan, partner. <laughs> so, both of Mark. Mother Ray, uh, we told you about a uh, horseshoe pitching tournament, big one, in West Virginia that he was going to. Well, he won it. 11 wins and no losses. pitch this old tech. You're right, Chris. He'll have to get to the left side of the lane, slide the six and the seven, but that was just an error and shot. You see Walter trying to get the ball out by the first, outside the first arrow, and actually pulls it inside the first arrow, and you don't get away with many mistakes in this bowling center, and he's in trouble. All right, open frame for the king of all of bowling, number one in the world. As Norm Duke comes up, take a commanding lead with a strike here in the second frame. Single pin. Chris, no doubt, and there's always the fear of the channel. When a, pl a player plays the outside line, look at this shot by Duke. It's right over the first arrow, about what we saw Walter Ray do on the left-hand lane. As we watched in practice, the shot is down the first or second board. They're going to go cross lane here for the split, but they want to go down there for the strikes. Incidentally, so the professionals cover 96% of the single pin spares. 328 of 340 thus far. And there's a story to that, Chris. If you miss a single pin spare in PBA competition, you normally lose the match 75, 78% of the time. Mm. So open frames are disastrous. We live on strikes, but you've got to fill the frames. Ooh, a high hit and good results. Mm. I did the Charleston off the deck. That footwork placement peels off the approach. Well, something we've seen a lot of in Toronto two weeks ago at the IOF Foresters Classic, which was worn by Norm Duke. You see the six pin just uncooperative as it flies right around the 10. 
Easy spare for Walter Ray, common. All right, Walter Ray Williams Jr. You see that uh, he is trailing by 14. You need to start striking, and soon. ABC Bowl. Harrisburg is the capital of Pennsylvania, as I'm sure you know. We want you to take a look at the Capitol building, a grand Italian Renaissance edifice whose dome is styled after St. Peter's Basilica. Lovely. This is a Disney music collection. This is Woody. And this is my McDonald's. Where you can get one of three Disney CDs or cassettes for under $4. When you buy a Happy Meal or any large sandwich. Like a quarter pounder with cheese. You'll get great Disney songs. Hakuna Matata. Cruella de Vil. McDonald's would donate money to Ronald McDonald House Charity. This is the Disney Music Collection. This is really good music. You have got the first come into the league. You're at the bottom of the mountain. Football camp is the hardest thing I've ever been through. Team, coaches, media, all eyes are looking at me. Your whole body just starts getting hot. We asked some of the NFL's hottest rookies to switch antiperspirants and try degree. Body heat activated. As your body heat rises, degree releases extra protection when you need it most. As I work harder, degree works harder. This stuff really works. When your temperature rises, here it is, degree. Body heat activated degree for an extra degree of protection. Help me keep my coolness. Duke leads by 14 on these lanes. Well, Chris, uh, as we look at the championship pair each week, the PBA oils them a little bit differently, and uh, obviously this week it's a little more hooked than we've seen. The oil is down 37 feet on these lanes, and I think on the championship pair, I'd say more like 35 feet. The PBA adjusts that for equity on the tour. Now, there is a shot hanging on the channel by Norm Duke. And that's really a study in what works in today's modern game. We have tremendously powerful bowling balls. All the players basically use reactive resin bowling balls. And the light hit is really the highest percentage hit. I'd say 30 years ago, hit them solid, as you see uh, Norm Du taking a re-rack. But today, if you can hit them light with that power, you have a better chance of not getting tapped. Right now, Duke, 24-pin lead, can make a 34, frame a five, king of the hill match. Ten going out, leaving the three six. Norm uh, qualified by winning the IOF Foresters Championship. That was two weeks ago, and Walter Ray winning the Johnny Petraglia. And you saw a shot drifting high once again on the left-hand lane, 19 and 20, 32 lane bowling center. Duke knows this lane is going to hook a little bit more. Just gets a good break, avoids the split, leaves the three six spare. And also a reminder that Norm Duke qualified third in the overall championship, so you'll see him later. And the tournament leader is the man that's about to bowl. A guy whose reputation shows that he's a better player when he's behind in the match. Let's see what happens. No, third ten on the right lane. Almost could see it coming. The ball came down to the break point at about 38 feet down the lane. Walter spreads his hand, hoping that if he gets a strike, watch this. Once again, the six pin has nothing to do with the 10. That's just the angle of attack to the pocket. Next Saturday at 3 Eastern and Pacific, 2 Central on ABC Sports, it's the Greater Detroit Open, where last year Doug Kent won his first PBA title. That's Pro Bowlers Tour next Saturday on ABC in the Motor City. Only his second strike in six frames. And it's pretty obvious by that camera angle we just saw there that Walter is not taking that acute angle into the pocket on the left-hand lane, and he carries the pins very easily. The right-hand lane, he's playing a little bit more swing out towards the outside edge, has had trouble with the 10-pin. There you see the top five, three or more appearances on King of the Hill. 
Randy Peterson undefeated. Three matches. There's been 18 King of the Hill matches. This is the 19th. Ron Williams, incidentally, has six victories and two losses. Well, you're looking at a player right here who is uh, 33 years old, and he is the complete package of professional bowling. He's versatile, he has all the shots, and he knows how to win. On the tour today, if you just have one shot, they'll send you home. All right, so a two pin. See the ball sliding by, Duke making an adjustment. He was out here at first, now he's coming a little bit more in the inside angle, hoping to have that ball delay the hook. It delays a little more than he wants, gets away with a simple spare. The two pin almost had the two four ten. He'll convert this and take a 22 pin lead into the seventh frame. Okay, as we go to break, let's take a royal trip down memory lane. Our trip down memory lane this week takes us back to the Hill, January 16th, 1993, and the first ever King of the Hill match. Ron Williams captured the crown by defeating Parker Bone III, 246 to 210. He would go on to appear in eight consecutive King of the Hill matches, winning six of them. Hey, what's our good buddy done? He thinks he can meet that girl. He wants the best. Hey, Rick boy, go dust your stuff off. Hi, Cupcake. What do you say if I have one light and you appreciate it? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Nicely done. Fun to watch. Make it a Bud Light. My job is to compare products. And it's not often that I'm surprised. So when Head & Shoulders went up against the leading prescription brand, I expected the prescription to be better. But it isn't. A study proves head and shoulders is effective against dandruff. I found out there's a microscopic fungus associated with dandruff, and head and shoulders helps kill it. Helps stop flakes before they even start. Not even the expensive prescription works better. You may never see flakes again. I don't. Strap on a new perspective. Going in. This is what you usually see. This is what you're going to see. Cameras where they've never been before. MTV's Daisy Fuentes takes you to extremes. You gotta, gotta see this. You gotta see this. ABC Monday, 8, 7 Central. Yes, we have brought back the King of the Hill match. After an absence, brought back Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Norm Duke. They qualified to be here. Walter Ray, whom you're looking by winning the Johnny Petraglio. Norm Duke's lead to 12, and the game is on, Nelson. Thank you, Chris Shanker. With me is the man who will bowl Norm Duke in the neck, actually the first championship match. Uh, Eugene, you got pretty lucky to get here to the top championship round. Yeah, well, I pulled 41 good games, then I got on a pair of the last game that was just horrible. I couldn't figure anything out. I go Brooklyn, then I trip a six, then I go through, I didn't know what it was, so I just threw it 100 miles down the lane and hit light, tripped a five out, and I got one beat by a pin. Been lucky so far. Let's see what happens in the next match. And now he trails by two. A pattern, a Walter Ray Williams Jr. pattern. He gets behind, gets stronger at the end. Now here's Norm Duke. He has a spare up shooting in the eighth frame. I hit, leaving a 6-10. What's interesting, with Duke leading this match by one pin, he has missed the pocket five times, Walter only once. It just shows you that if you have the luck going with you, especially in a short-term match, one game is uh, obviously very short, the breaks are very important. And of course, with three more telecasts here in 1997, that means three more Kings of the Hill. So if you could win all four, you'd get, in addition to the 10000 with each victory, a $25,000 bonus. So, oh, there's considerable loot. Could add up to 80000 Not a bad deal. Mm -hmm. And something to remember. Remember, it's Duke and Walter Ray in this match, but Duke will bowl G Eugene McCune 
in the first championship match, which is the next game. But the outcome of this one is still in question. Foundation strength for Norm Duke. We are squared up here. Now, it's three in a row, ninth frame. Well, he covered his eyes as a little bit ugly for Walter, but it looks like both of the players are sticking a little bit of the following. We had some trouble with that yesterday in this bowling center with the high humidity, and you see Walter just double bounce, and he pulls the ball left of target. Making sure to mark in that frame. All right, coming up next, except on the West Coast, the Memorial Tournament sponsored by Dean Witter. Your second round leader, Scott Hoke, tries to hold off the field. As we come up in the 10th frame, Walter Ray Williams Jr. trails by two, has a possible 214. A strike here by Walter Ray Williams Jr. would force Duke to double to win the match and also set up the possibility of a tie. Chris, he's got that extra gear, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. It's, it's that fifth or sixth at Indy or wherever they race. Walter Ray was somewhat of a reticent manner that we don't always see on his face. Uh, he's concentrating on getting at least a good solid count, forcing Duke to perform an attempt. 213. can take a, a breather with his score. Right now, Walter Ray sits on the bench, 213 in hand. Norm Duke must strike on this ball. Absolutely mandatory. Cannot win without a strike and at least an eight count spare. Here we go. Walter Ray wins. Ah. That ball just kind of rolled out on Norm Duke. He feathered it down there in the really two good competitors. Let's face it, Walter did bowl the better of the two games. That's $10,000 for Walter Ray Williams, Jr. That means next week in Detroit, he will be in the king of the hill again. Okay, the showboat king of the hill match. There is the winner of our return. As this ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowler Sir will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Who's the biggest showboat on the PBA Tour? Well, the same showboat that's been the biggest name on the tour for over 35 years. The Showboat Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Only the showboat has the largest bowling center in the U.S. with more happy customers per square inch, plus refurbished rooms and restaurants. When you're rolling around Vegas, only the Showboat Hotel and Casino makes you feel like the king of the hill. I like being in control. With this new Dinerex, I control the cause of my dandruff every day. New Dinerex Advanced Formula. Its medicine doesn't just treat the symptoms, it controls the leading cause of dandruff called Peel Valley. Now that's serious control. New Dinerex Advanced Formula. Coaches, team, media, all eyes are looking at me. We asked some of the NFL's hottest rookies to try Degree. Body heat activated. As your body heat rises, Degree releases extra protection when you need it most. As I work harder, Degree works harder. Degree for an extra degree of protection. Saturday, other guys reruns driving you nuts. ABC's got all new shows all night. How cool is this? Starting with an all new Lois and Clark. Then, it's an all new Leaving LA. It's fascinating to see your spiritual side. See for yourself why the press calls it brilliant. Check this out. An all new Leaving LA. Then, on an all new critically acclaimed gun. A priest learns terrible secrets and confession. And with James Olmos, Maria Conchita Alonso, an all new gun, ABC Saturday. 
Announcing the great big event at your Cadillac dealer. Right now, Cadillac's great big factory to dealer incentives of up to $2,000 will get you a great deal. And to make the deal even greater and bigger, buy or lease any new 97 Cadillac and you'll get an OnStar satellite tracking system free. Plus, register to win a trip to the Greenbrier, America's resort. Great big savings, great big bonus, great big vacation. The great big event, only at your Cadillac dealer and only till June 7th. Come and see the world's complete premier home woodworking system in action. The Shopsmith Mark V lets you and your family have fun woodworking together and take pride in all you create. The Mark V only takes up the space of a bicycle. Most importantly, the Shopsmith Mark V saves you time and money. So come in and save at the factory direct sale in your area and receive a free gift just for watching the demonstration. See the Shopsmith Mark V demonstrated at Park City Center, Lancaster, Capital City Mall, Cafe, Old New York, Galleria, Thursday, May 29th through Sunday, June 1st, and get a 1595 Woodworking Projects book free. Teenagers trapped in dangerous love obsession on the next Montel. The Professional Bowlers Tour on ABC Sports. Brought to you by McDonald's, home of America's favorite fries. Head and shoulders because great hair can have flakes. And Bud Light, if you want quick taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Ah, Pennsylvania, especially Harrisburg. Here at the Harrisburg Open, King of the Hill is finished, 213 to 204. Walter Ray Williams won it. Now we go into the championship with Eugene McCune, number four, and goes against number three, Norm Duke. Should be a good match. Well, it should be, Chris. Uh, it's, it's interesting to see what happens to uh, Norm Duke. The downtrodden has a chance to uh, redeem himself a little bit, but let's see how he reacts to losing $10,000 on one ball to Walter Ray. And right now he's going against a very tough young opponent, Eugene McCune. Okay, there they are, the handshake. Eugene from a real bowling family, Munster, Indiana. His dad, Don, is in the PBA Hall of Fame. Sister Chris is on the Ladies Professional Tour. And he's um, still looking for that first big win. An exciting, loquacious type guy, and uh, I, I have to call him the rocket man, Chris. This mm -hmm. fellow can throw the ball down the lane when necessary, probably as fast as anybody I've seen since uh, our USA team coach, Palmer Falgren. Let's see how he does in his opening match. scout. What a combination. Watch the action of the head pin. Hello. I love it. <laughs> now Norm Duke. Just lost to Walter Ray in the King of the Hill. Smooth as could be, but High on the head pin, he has left the three, six, and ten. Duke, once again, is struggling. He missed the, the pocket six times in 11 shots the first game. He missed it the first time here. That's over 50% of the balls out of the pocket. And he's a stickler for changing balls, fiddling with his thumb. And I don't see that him doing that right now. Uh, once again, he keeps sticking with the same ball. And Duke is a very versatile player. This is interesting. Okay. McCune with a strike, Duke with a spare. This is our first game between numbers four and three of the Harrisburg Open Championship. Harrisburg on the lazy, meandering Susquehanna River. Duke fiddling with his uh, thumb hole and kind of a, a harbinger of things to come. Last night, Norm Duke only won two of his six matches with a 144 game in the final eight games. So he's continuing his struggling today. No break. 10 pin on the left lane. Lost indeed is the word for Duke. And what he needs to do, and he knows a lot of things, a lot of tricks. He's trying to finesse the ball in there. Chris, I think he's absolutely just too loose. I mean, you have to step it up. Uh, uh, one notch when you come on TV, and he's a little too relaxed. Okay. This is Norm's 50th television appearance. His fourth of 1997. He has a victory. One second and a fourth. Winning in 2.5. 
Toronto, and now Eugene McCune, a regional champion three times. That ball almost took him with it. Nelson? Thank you, Chris. Uh, Walter Ray, kind of an interesting start to a day. Uh, unexpectedly, you came behind, as you usually do, to win a match. Well, uh, Norm was getting all the breaks that game. I kept leaving ring intense. I had the one bad shot earlier. I left the split. He kept, he had a Brooklyn and kept going and uh, breaking down his splits and getting strikes when he did hit the pocket. I was uh, thinking, you know, he's going to get that strike in the 10th frame and beat me. But uh, fortunately, I got the break and uh, won the match. Now, do you have a big edge coming back with a practice game as a title? I think so. I think uh, the left lane took a fair amount more for me. I've got a good idea how to play the lanes. I've got some practice shots before the match starts. I have a good idea how it's going to play. All right, we'll see what the big guy does in about 45 minutes. Chris, back to you. But Nelson mentioned earlier that uh, Gene McCune unleashed rockets. The last one was that three in a row. That was a spare up. Norm Duke. Oh, 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 oh. Didn't like them sticking at the line and into the channel, Nelson. Act's interesting, it Duke sticks at the line, flips it out to the right. Of course, you're playing that extreme outside line. It is precarious, to say the least. But Duke had an incident last yesterday, Chris, where he needed a mark mm -hmm. to win a game, stuck at a foul line, went over the foul line, and fouled and lost the game by one pin to Steve Wilson. And I think he's been conscious of that foul line for the last day and a half. It's affected his timing and confidence. Good. Glad he came back. Third frame. So he'll mark with a spare in that third. Missing with the first shot. So he moves to the left lane. Wonderful Walt guy. Walter in the interview says this lane's hooking six to seven boards more. Hmm. All right, strike for Norm. First one in the fourth frame. We're in Harrisburg where we'll return. is my idea of a challenge. That's the one I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. That's what I thought I was getting into. What I got was a sure thing. High endurance deodorant. It evaporates less quickly than the leading stick. It also lasts longer and protects better. Old Spice even guarantees it. Or call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. So if you're looking for a real challenge, the sky's the limit. If you're looking for the best deodorant, try high endurance from Old Spice. Because now you've got proof and a guarantee. When uh, we decided to have a baby, we knew we had to stop smoking first. We had the motivation. We needed the help. We chose Nicorette gum because it was flexible. It gave us a choice of two strengths, one for light smokers, me. One for heavy smokers, me. And the power to decide, you know, how much to use and when to use it to fight our cravings. We've been officially smoke-free for a year now. And in gratitude, we're thinking of calling the baby Nicorette. It's a joke, honey. Nicorette gum will help you quit smoking successfully by helping you control your cravings. You can do it. Nicorette can help. This is Jack's Tournament, but after it's over, it may belong to Tiger. The Memorial Tournament, sponsored by Dean Witter, next on ABC. A one, a two, a three. There'll be nothing but strikes at the Greater Detroit Open. Plus, the King of the Hill competition rolls up. Next Saturday on ABC Sports. The professional bowlers have come back to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania for the sixth consecutive time. First time at ABC North. And it's our first uh, visit televising the pros here. And we appreciate the study. Couldn't trip the four. That maze. Gene had uh, strung three here in the opening match of the Harrisburg Open. In our return of the King of the Hill, Walter Ray Williams Jr. defeated Norm Duke 213 to 204 for 10,000. Okay, Bo. Thank you, Chris. The man who qualified second, Tommy Baker. Tommy, you usually work with us at ABC out in the truck. Do um, you have any message for your fellow buddies out there doing the telecast? Well, the beginning of the week, I told him I didn't want to work this week. <laughs> I just wanted one message for Bob, John, uh, and Brian out there. 
Um, I really don't miss you guys, and uh, it's really been a quiet day because uh, I don't have to listen to Bobby all day long. <laughs> and good luck to you, Bakes. We'll be watching the next match. Back to you, Chris. Okay. <laughs> Another powerhouse strike coming in the fifth frame for Gene McCune. So this match uh, uh, well in hand for McCune at this point as we look at Duke, the whole approach. Fiddling around, just trying to figure out what will work on this championship pair. Leaving the two sleeper eight. Tough spare, and as our producer Carol Letty noted, that Duke has been filling around changing bowling balls, but when that doesn't work, you have to change the game of attack. He needs, he's got a shot, he can crank it up, he can move outside and throw harder. He must make a gamble and change something besides the ball. Now, Chris, basically, Duke can do it all. There's no doubt. He can throw mm -hmm. the big hook, and he can throw the hard rocket shot that McCune is kind of playing, and it seems to work well because it doesn't hook too early on the left-hand lane where everybody has seemed to struggle. McCune hit that lane, and Duke can feather it down on the right-hand lane. He's going to have to draw on all his match game skills to get back into this contest. The 1993 Masters Champion, 1994 Tournament of Champions winner. been listening to us. If you could see the difference in the speed of the approach, that's where you get our your power. He, he speeded his, he sped up his approach. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Much quicker. Gets a real strong pivot. And see the big snapping hook from deep inside. That's the type of shot that may work for Duke. You might as well try something. See the money leaders, 1997, Parker Bone at the top, Weber second, Walter Ray third, and Norm Duke with 80,320. All right. Right here, a little deceleration. You try to aim the ball. And this is what happens. The ball hooks too quickly. As we saw in our graph, there's 35 feet of oil this week. You've got to keep the speed up. Jim has earned 29,255 this year. Well, Gene falls in the category, I think, Chris, of Doug Kent. And I've said Doug Kent is probably one of the great untapped talents out here who mm -hmm. could be a superstar. Gene could do the same thing. He has all the shots. He has the experience. He just needs the, the maturation to make himself a top player. As you see him putting a piece of black tape in the back of the thumb hole. Players will put, say, white tape, which has a little bit more adhesiveness to it. If you're dropping the ball a lot, if you just want to tighten it up and get out of it smooth, use the black tape. It's a little smoother. Let's see how it works. He leads by 31 pins, seventh frame. after this. Cozy, huh? What? Whoa. Bedroom? No way. Security? <laughs> Close the transportation! Classic fixtures. Ooh, what do we have here? Bud Light. Go ahead. It's got your name on it. I'll get my own. Take it for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. That was close. I was down on my last one. I like being in control. With this new Dinnerex, I control the cause of my dandruff every day. New Dinnerex Advanced Formula. Its medicine doesn't just treat the symptoms, it controls a leading cause of dandruff called Peel Valley. Now that's serious control. New Dinnerex Advanced Formula. This is the Disney Music Collection. And this is my McDonald's. Where you can get one of three Disney CDs or cassettes for under $4. With songs from your favorite Disney movies. Hakuna Matata. This is really good music. We were younger. All right, there's your tournament leader, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Okay, now... Norm Duke, that's the man that Walter Ray defeated in our Return of the King of the Hill. 
213 to 204. That's a more like it, Norm Duke. Run away to the sixth of the strike up. McCune, 139 to the sixth of the strike up. Duke reaches into his bag of tricks. He threw a cranker shot on the left-hand lane. He's changed to a ball that's about three years old that he used earlier in the week. I had the luxury of uh, bowling on the same squad with him this week. He was an early leader. This is a little bit older type reactive resin ball. Let's see if it works on both lanes. Seven ten on the left lane. Speaking of balls, um, Pete Weber Let's see, use quite a few balls, and then one game decided to use an old scratchy up one and bowl to 300 here. <laughs> well, the lane, Chris, the lanes were very dry, and players were looking for ways to control the ball, and so that's the reason that happened. Okay. <laughs> Just to clarify a rule very quickly, the players can carry as many balls as they want on the tour, but they're only allowed eight bowling balls in the building. And uh, normally, if you get down to your eighth ball, you're out of the tournament anyway. Now McCune with a golden opportunity to open up a huge lead. And he took advantage of it. Oh, he looks like a real champion. Well, as you said earlier, his daddy's a real champion. Mm -hmm. uh, Don McCune won in one year seven PBA titles, was the player of the year of 1973. And Eugene made a, uh, not a unique change, but a change that he likes and some of the other players like on today's light pins, powerful balls. He's dropped to a 15-pound bowling ball, and he feels like he gets more control, less trouble with his hand, and better carry on the solid hits. Right now, he can open up a 51-pin lead. Good left to two. Satisfied with that. Well, this the situation for Eugene, as you see him break up the 2-8, and he's quickly up with another ball to shoot this spare, he wastes no time, is that he needs to mark out for 228. That would shut out Duke. Mm. Tonight on ABC, no summer reruns here. Nope. It's an all-new night of great new episodes, starting with Boston Clark, then leaving L.A., and then Ever James Olmos and Maria Conchita Alonso star in the all-new gun three hours all new all tonight all on abc sometimes you never see the the personable side of some of these players are in such a, a serious environment and right now duke is just out of this match and cracks a little joke with the crowd as he is really struggling In fact, this match is all over, even by yeah. pencil. If Duke strikes out, he has 194. Eugene McCune already has 198 in the bag. Obviously happy with his first game performance. He'll go up against Tommy Baker in the semifinal. Duke just going to have a little fun. What a great player. I remember, two weeks ago, he won in Toronto. The Independent Order of Foresters. Now he's really responding. <laughs> Well, it was tears then as he banked about $80,000 yes. that day, and today he's going to go home with another nice paycheck. Uh, obviously, it wasn't his day. He had str struggled yesterday and struggled on the championship pair today. And Karen and Brandon, his wife and son, will understand. All five, five feet five of them. Just a delightful young man. Eugene, you should be satisfied with your performance so far and really have the type of game that can hit this pair. Looky here. They're looky having here. a little fun here. Duke's going to throw a little trick shot. Let's stay with this one. Huh? Not the answer, but pretty good. All right. And to be honest, if you're really for the purest, that's illegal to throw the ball that way because your fingers are not in the holes. <laughs> okay. Duke uh, registering a 180. We'll have uh, McKins later. As, as the tip of the week is next, where according to Danny Weisman, your legs can give you the best foundation for a solid game. Danny Wiseman, PBA champion, on his way to another victory. 
Danny, you've been very successful in the championship round, especially on television, yet, yet you're not a big, powerful guy. What's your secret? Well, I believe, though, um, the most important part of bowling nowadays is um, your legs, and you have to really incorporate them into your shot, especially for the ladies and the smaller men out there. Now, right here, the pivot step is staying in contact with the approach long so I can drive my hand through the shot. All right, Danny, you have the pivot step in contact, but how do you keep it there so solid to let you push through into your slide step? Well, one of the key ingredients is to have an all-rubber sole, which is very soft and very durable, and it enables the foot to stay in contact with the approach longer. All right, great tip from Danny Wiseman. Use a soft rubber sole on your pivot step, not your slide step. You'll get more power, use your legs, and have better success. First coming into the league, you're at the bottom of the mountain. Football camp is the hardest thing I've ever been through. Team, coaches, media, all eyes are looking at me. Your whole body just starts getting hot. We asked some of the NFL's hottest rookies to switch antiperspirants and try Degree. Body heat activated. As your body heat rises, Degree releases extra protection when you need it most. As I work harder, Degree works harder. This stuff really works. When your temperature rises, here it is. Degree. Body heat activated Degree for an extra degree of protection. Help me keep my coolness. My job is to compare products. And it's not often that I'm surprised. So when Head & Shoulders went up against the leading prescription brand, I expected the prescription to be better, but it isn't. A study proves Head & Shoulders is effective against dandruff. I found out there's a microscopic fungus associated with dandruff, and Head & Shoulders helps kill it. Helps stop flakes before they even start. Not even the expensive prescription works better. You may never see flakes again. I don't. If your game is in the pits, your team feels like the pits, maybe, just maybe, it's the shirts. 1-800-PBA-TOUR. Our shirts are the pits. No problem. Shirts are on their way. Now it's time to put some color on your team and more fun in your game. It's amazing what a bunch of strikes will do for you. So, now you too can look like a winner and bowl like a pro. Just call 1-800-PBA-TOUR. Pennsylvania. Eugene McCune defeated Norm Duke 222 to 172. So now meets the veteran Tom Baker. There is uh, Jack Bauer. What a great chairman. Welcome everybody here today. Hey Chris, we looked through 5 through 24. Some interesting highlights. David Ozio got the last check. Anthony Lombardo, the young player on the tour, I think is uh, the early leader in the Rookie of the Year award. As we go through some of the other players that finished in the 5 through 24, Doug Kent just missed by one pin over 42 games. Doug, couldn't you have found one pin? And that was Eugene McCune's spot. Steve Wilson, a good week. My teammate in St. Louis, Pete Weber. The original king, Ron Williams, they did appearances in the championship round King of the Hill. Roger Bowker, the new Bowker fan club sweatshirts are out. Mike Edwards just introduced and in, uh, in inducted into the, the Native American Hall of Fame. Congratulations. A class act, Kelly Coffin. Dennis Jake qualified for the top 24 by one pin. A tight week. Okay. Well, next week we're in Detroit, in Taylor, Michigan, actually, for the Greater Detroit Open. That's always a good event with the great fans. And then in two weeks, Wichita in Kansas. Both starting times at 3 Eastern. Match two now in the Harrisburg Championship coming up with you and Tom Baker. Yes, we too want to congratulate Mike Edwards on his induction. And also, um, the Roger Bowker t-shirts are out, did you say? I have my t-shirt. He has some new oh. sweatshirts out. Man, oh man, Chris, we'll get you one. They are something. When you go in the gym, lift weights, everybody asks you about Roger Bowker when you have his sweatshirt on. Do I have to lift weights to get one? <laughs> well, no we'll way. figure out something. All right, now we look at the bakes. Two-year-old Tom Baker, right? 26. Eight championships in 21 years. During match play, he defeated Gene McCune, lost to Walter Ray and Norm Duke. Now here's Gene after the big 20, 
222. Eugene, the solid Ted. A man after your own heart, Chris. He's mm -hmm. a Chicago Bull and an India Hannity Hoosier fan. As you're going to see, Eugene just mm -hmm. rocket right across here. Takes all the hook out of it, straight across from the bear. Philadelphia Flyer fans in this area with that Stanley Cup coming up against the exciting Red Wings who will be next week with our bowling telecast Detroit just sweeps them off the back of that powerful shot Eugene McCune of Munster, Indiana. That's up towards Chicago. Now Tom Baker from Buffalo. And a great, great representative for professional bowling for a long time. And taking a lead is Baker, and we go to Bo Burton. Well, one of the great players in my book, uh, Norm Duke, he had two whacks at him today and couldn't get either one of them on that championship here. Let's, let's talk about some of the adjustments you went through and uh, did you figure anything out? Yeah, I figured out that I'm better off over here than I am <laughs> over there. Uh, you know, you have some of those days where it's just lost, lost from the get-go and, and you know that the people that you're bowling are, are comfortable. And uh, I'm just lucky I made all the spares. Well, you're a class act. You'll be back next week in Detroit and uh, good luck in the tournament. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, as three. This is the semi-final match. The winner to meet Walter Ray Williams Jr. for the title. McCune, if you just joined us, defeated Norm Duke. Now he's marked with a spare and a strike, and now shooting in the third. He can cut the lead to ten. <laughs> Matching strikes now. This is the most mature performance I've seen Eugene McHugh mm -hmm. have. I've known him as a young man. He's still young, 28 years old. But he's never seemed to put the concentration to that natural talent. And he seems so serious out there, and I like to see him continue to perform that way. He's very entertaining, a crowd favorite. But he has so much potential. Don't let it slide by. Here he goes. He can even the match. against Tom Baker. We'll be back. Harrisburg is another River City stop for the Pro Bowlers Tour. This serene river is called the Susquehanna. spends 90 minutes destroying her hair and 90 seconds bringing it back with Pert Plus. More than a shampoo, it conditions too. How? As you shampoo, the conditioners stay suspended. As you rinse, the conditioners go to work, giving you great hair simply. Perfect for Mia, because she wants great hair, but she'd rather be living in it than working on it, wouldn't you? Pert Plus, simply great hair, simply. Improvement, ABC Tuesdays. Intelligent like my foot. Silver Charm at the rail. Those two to that free house on the outside. Silver Charm. Silver Charm goes to the Triple Crown in the Belmont Stakes next week on ABC. Pennsylvania, the heart of it in Harrisburg. A standing room only crowd at the sixth annual Harrisburg Open. As Tom Baker 
has three in a row, now shooting in the fourth frame of this semifinal game. His opponent is Eugene McCune. to six pin. See six rounds, first three rounds qualifying 18 games, then add that to the other 24 games and you end up with 42 games. You see Bake with a routine spare. A wry smile. One of fright too because it was close. Baker playing about the same type of line as Eugene McCune. They're going to actually try to swing the ball from somewhere in this area out to the edge, not all the way to the edge. It either hangs or flips off there. And Baker, a very classic type player, he'll stand about there in the center, slide about in this area, and a slight loft. And watch the spin he gets on the ball, which helps it slide through the front part of the area. Now it's a four on the left lane. Chris, we remember uh, Tommy Baker as being one of the top five players in the 80s. Oh, definitely. And, uh, no doubt, along with Anthony, Roth, Holman, the names mm -hmm. like that, then had wrist problems, a major operation that put him down for a couple years, and he's really been going well the last two years. Good attitude. He's a cool customer. This year, his best was seventh at the Columbia 300, and his last win was the AC Delco in 1996. And that was a big one. Huge prize money. He led the tournament and just whacked everybody. Well, another 10 pin. We've seen mm -hmm. a number of those in a right hand lane and uh, my guesstimate, Chris, and that ball speed is over 20 miles an hour. I say closer to 21. And I'm going to say let's look at about 23 or 24 on this one. He allows no hook at all. Ooh. However, you have to be accurate as he just slings the ball. Actually, slides off his hand, slings it into the right-hand channel. And for the first time today, Eugene McCune is behind. Look at this ball slide off his hand. See the follow-through go over towards his left hook? hook hip, I'm sorry, and that's an indication the ball sliding off his hand on the bottom of the swing. You try to grab hold of it, and you follow through to the left. If he had followed through to the right, it would have been an indication that it was hanging on his hand. Let's see if he can come back. Well, Eugene McCune, gather your thoughts. This is the reason we haven't seen G Eugene in the winner's circle before. He has all that talent, and all of a sudden it just slips off. All of a sudden, he should have taken a little more time on the 10-pin. Mm. I would have even taken a little more time, even if I went past the 25-second clock, just to get my concentration back. Now, it's mandatory he makes this spare. Sometimes this is easier than a single pin, though. And a 10-pin. So that's 116 through the 6th. And instead of on top, is trailing by 22. Tomorrow night on ABC starts with a brand new episode of Second Noah, followed by America's Funniest Home Videos, then the two-hour world premiere, premiere movie. I'll tell you about it. Ten pin for Tom Baker. That two-hour world premiere movie that kicks off a great new daytime drama. Watch what happens in Port Charles. That's tomorrow night on ABC, Fort Charles. I saw the previews of that show. It really looks great, Chris. You know, Chris, that Port Charles is going to be a soap opera after its mm -hmm. uh, premiere, as you see right now. Eugene McCune making an adjustment to that thumb hole. You have to have the good feel, digging those fingers into the finger grips, get the solid feel on the thumb. He can get right back in this match. Get up, get up. Yeah. Timely run for Tom Baker in the seventh frame. Baker in the lead by 21 pins, the semifinal game.
My sister did without for years to make this business work. Some morning she'd wake up, her back felt ready for a wrecking ball. She'd take two Tylenol, but hours later, pain had come back. She'd have to take more. She couldn't take it any longer. So her doctor said try a leave. I could take just two a leave all day. With Tylenol, I was taking up to eight. So she tried a leave. Keeps the pain away up to 12 hours. It's meant a great deal to her. Who did your hair? A leave. All day strong, all day long. Troy Aikman is back to pass. He's looking, looking, and ooh, Aikman's down. He had a man wide open. What was this guy thinking? Brute, it's all part of the game. All right, guys, same play. This is the Disney Music Collection. And this is my McDonald's. Where you can get one of three Disney CDs or cassettes for under $4. With songs from your favorite Disney movies. Hakuna Matata. This is really good music. The trophy for the winner of the Harrisburg Open. This is a semifinal game. The tournament leader is waiting to meet the winner of this game. The tournament leader being number one in the world, Walter Ray Williams. Here's Eugene McCune. That came after two open frames, a strike in the seventh for Eugene. Commercial did him a little break there. I uh, needed that uh, one minute break and let's see if he can get right back in the match. He, at one time he was tied through four frames. If he strikes here in the eighth, he'll be in arrears by just 11 pins and the game will be on. Didn't get the 10. Wow. Mm. He saw that five pin out, that head pin, and he had half the building shooting over at the 10 and does not get it. Disappointment. Hey! Look at where that 10 pin went. That 10 pin's halfway up the lane. He's talking about putting some zip on the ball. That's how you make the 7-10 split. Eugene threw that ball, hit the 10 pin dead square on, and it bounced halfway up. It's in the left-hand channel over there in 19. That is the 10 pin that Eugene just knocked out there in the eighth frame. They'll roll a ball down there to clear it out, re-rack the machine, and Baker will come up. Now, well, good action here. <laughs> it's the ABC North Bowl. Full of everything today, Nelson. You bet, especially with the bakes out there. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's the 10-pin being hit by, actually double-kissed by the ball of Eugene McCune, flies out of the lane. No matter how hard you hit it, as long as it go down, it counts. Bakes up in the eighth, leads by 21, can make it 31 in a route if he can strike here. Mm. An eight. Well, we see two different styles as you see Bake with the light wall shots, and we see two different personalities, the taciturn personality of the Bakes and the outgoing personality of McCune. Who will be the winner? Next Saturday at 4.30 Eastern on ABC's Wide World of Sports, it's the third and final race in the Visa Triple Crown Challenge, 129th running of the Belmont Stakes. That's right, Silver Charm will try to become the first Triple Crown winner since 1978. Next Saturday, on ABC, the mile and a half Belmont Stakes. Run for the carnations, white carnations. Here's a man that owned three race horses at once. Tommy Bay, uh, get up. A 10. And doing what he has to do to stay in the match and keep it close. Right now, Tommy Baker, with his second 10 pin and the 12th, I believe we've seen of the day, is going at a 216 pace, 20 pin lead. McCune has a possible 216. Every match close, nobody been able to run away because the carry has been tough. And there's two reasons for the 10 pin, Chris, that, that, that I can see from this point. Is number one, we have synthetic lanes and the lanes are only oiled 35 feet. That gives the players 25 feet of free run with these powerful balls to the pocket. Secondly, they're throwing so hard, they're driving the pins over the top of each other and that doesn't optimize your carry. 
a six pin on the right lane, a high hit. Good all-around athlete, basketball player in high school, baseball pitcher, actually pitched a no-hitter in a high school game. Right now, he needs to throw some strikes, as in baseball, to stay in this match. Possible 205 for Eugene McCune. With two strikes, he'll force Baker to mark. He needs one more strike to stay in the match. We've seen a lot of open frames in the 10th frame to change a match around. If McCune can get a strike, he'll force the Bakes to mark. The young players say, lock and load, hit the pocket, nothing but pin shrapnel left on the deck. That's about as much as you can do to the pins. <laughs> you might get him a role in the soap opera. <laughs> He's an entertaining young man. We'll he see is. a lot of him, but this match is not over. disappear together. <laughs> well, he's still in the match. Who will be the player to roll Walter Ray Williams for the Harrisburg Open title? Just be determined, be determined on this ball. And Baker steps off. Simply reason, The simple reason is the rack on the left-hand lane did not reset. He doesn't want to come down in the middle of his approach. So the 25-second clock, which is mandatory for players to throw a ball in that time, does not begin to tick until the rack is set. Now he's set, needs a mark to win the match. He came with the 205. And one million dollars. He goes over one million with a shot. He's a million. 18th to earn that much money on the lanes. And believe me, to earn a million, that is hard duty. Hard earned. Well, it's going to get even more difficult. Walter Ray Williams Jr. will be his opponent in the championship match coming up. This is miracle Grow Lawn Food, the easy way to a beautiful lawn. It took years to develop these patented granules, but you'll start seeing results in just days. miracle Grow promotes vigorous root growth, helps fill in thin spots to give you a thick carpet of beautiful green. If you like what miracle Grow does for your garden, you will love what miracle Grow Lawn Food does for your lawn. And now get rid of dandelions and other weeds with miracle Grow Lawn Food plus weed control. Who's the biggest showboat on the PBA tour? Well, the same showboat that's been the biggest name on the tour for over 35 years. The Showboat Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Only the showboat has the largest bowling center in the U.S. with more happy customers per square inch, plus refurbished rooms and restaurants. When you're rolling around Vegas, only the Showboat Hotel and Casino makes you feel like the king of the hill. This is Jack's Tournament, but after it's over, it may belong to Tiger. The Memorial Tournament, sponsored by Dean Witter. Next on ABC. ABC Monday. The 97 World Music Awards pays tribute to the Bee Gees on the 20th anniversary of Saturday Night Fever. An unforgettable performance of the greatest hits you love and their new song, Alone. Direct from Monaco, the Bee Gees will be rocking at the 1997 World Music Awards, ABC Monday.
Announcing the great big event at your Cadillac dealer. Right now, Cadillac's great big factory dealer incentives of up to $2,000 will get you a great deal. And to make the deal even greater and bigger, buy or lease any new 97 Cadillac and you'll get an OnStar satellite tracking system free. Plus, register to win a trip to the Greenbrier, America's resort. Great big savings, great big bonus, great big vacation. The great big event, only at your Cadillac dealer and only till June 7th. Tired of the same reruns on TV? Then get out and have some real fun at Red Crown Bowling Center. There's fun for the entire family, like rock and bowl every Friday and Saturday night. Tuesday night, Cosmic Happy Hour. The Bowl and Brew Lounge for Mom and Dad. A great snack bar for the kids. The fun never stops. Don't forget to ask about their special senior citizens rates. Red Crown Bowling Center, where there's a good time every day of the week. Located at 2471 Sycamore Street, right behind Fluorescent Supply on Faxon Street. After almost a decade behind bars, could this man be innocent? Inside Edition. And in Harrisburg, a recap of what's happened up to now. Walter Ray Williams Jr. defeating Norm Duke, 222 to 172, and the King of the Hill. Then in match one, McCune defeating Norm, 222 to 172. Then in step Tom Baker, who moved up to a notch with his victory over McCune, 215 to 205. And in our booth, none other than Norm Duke. Norman, quick question. Uh, who do you like in this last match? It's obviously uh, the Bakes against Walter Ray. Well, the sentimental favor here for me is Tommy. I, everybody out here would like to see him continue winning. But my vested interest is Walter Ray. If he was to win, I get to come back next week. So uh, go, Walter Ray. <laughs> uh, well, we'll watch the match with you. And, Chris, you have some interesting uh, news for the bowling world. Yeah, and we about. should uh, point out that uh, Norm is referring to the King of the Hill next week if Walter wins the Harrisburg Open. These two guys go at it again for the $10,000 winner take all. But, yes, Ebonite International, which is... Um, long been a leader for decades in the bowling industry has reached an agreement with the PBA to sponsor four events on the fall tour and uh, the four Ebonite challenges will be televised live on ESPN that's live on Thursday nights beginning in October and we expect to sit in our uh, easy chair and watch you young man could I? I'd like to be here <laughs> okay it's a deal all right the championship match coming up it'll be Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Tommy Baker Thanks, Norm Duke. Walter Ray Williams in this match is trying to again defend a title. He is the defending champion here. An interesting note, the man who finishes first, and that will be Walter Ray in this match, in championship matches, wins about 70% of the time, so Baker is only a 3 to 10 odds to win this match. Okay, and while we contemplate that split, uh, which thoroughbred do you like in next week's Belmont Stakes here on ABC? Well, I, <laughs> I could ask him that, but right now the odds for him are, are a lot different. You know, Silver Charm next week, Chris, but I'll take the field against Silver Charm. Uh, I, I got a feeling he's going to have a tough go without Captain Bodgett in there to pace him. All right. So uh, Tom Baker, not an, it was an unwanted beginning with an open frame, count of nine. Now Walter Ray. Oh, oh, baby. I hit, hit it. Hit it. Come on. Hey. Walter in his match, the King of the Hill match, left three ten pins on this right-hand lane, and I can see he's trying to goose it a little bit more to make it flip up and carry out the ten. Right now he's left the three six nine ten. Got to get the ball in this area, and the best way to play it is a little bitty hook in from left to right because you got to carry that back pin. He did it. That's fair. For Walter Ray Williams in the first frame. Tournament leader today. He led four of the six rounds during match play. He had a match play record of 17 wins and uh, seven losses. Three-time PBA player of the year. Wow. That was 
wind up. I bet he could have said more, huh? Walter Ray needs to get over to the 4 7 10, slide the 4 over into the 10. Tough shot. Hmm. So now each throw with an open frame. Baker's coming in the first, Walter's in the second. This is the championship match. Tom Baker now. Up. He lost to uh, Walter Ray in match play. Thank you, Chris. Eugene McEwen, you looked great. It looked like you were the guy to beat, and then all of a sudden, the Aaron spare shot. Yeah, well, I needed tape in the spare ball, but I was making them anyway, so I just left it go. Should have put tape in it, and then I saw a guy on my left walk around, spin around, and so stop stopping like I should have. I was stupid and went up there and threw it in the gutter. That's the type of experience that's going to make you a winner. Eugene McEwen, you will win shortly. Good luck, pal. Thank you very much. Back to you, Chris. Championship match. Right. Leaving the seven pin. Going into that uh, frame, he had a four pin lead, which he still holds. He'll go cross lane now on the left lane for the single pin. Very nice. Well, Walter Ray has all the shots, and he could probably take a note from what Eugene McCune said. Speed the ball up. You've got to throw hard in this championship here to be successful. Wow. Oh, boy. I think he went over and picked up a new ball. Did? Mm-hmm. Set down the ball with the yellow stripe and picked up one that's uh, full urethane. The other is half ur uh, full of uh, reactive resin instead of the half and half, and neither one of them seems to work very well for him today. So up to now, he's used three balls. Okay. Well, he can use eight of them, Chris. Right. A little sidebar note, what we got here. Uh, we haven't seen any lefties, and no left-handers cashed in the tournament this week. That's a, that's a rarity on the PBA Tour. And secondly, following up on Walter Day, uh, on Norm Duke's fill shot, as you see Walter Ray, you have to have your fingers in the hole of a bowling ball. If you saw that trick shot, in order to make an illegal delivery. Okay. Strike in the fourth frame for Walter Ray. This is a title game. It'll continue when we come back. When uh, we decided to have a baby, we knew we had to stop smoking first. We had the motivation. We needed the help. We chose Nicorette gum because it was flexible. It gave us the choice of two strengths, one for light smokers, me. One for heavy smokers, me. And the power to decide, you know, how much to use and when to use it to fight our cravings. We've been officially smoke-free for a year now. And in gratitude, we're thinking of calling the baby Nicorette. It's a joke, honey. Nicorette gum will help you quit smoking successfully by helping you control your cravings. You can do it. Nicorette can help. It's third and long. Clearly, they're thinking pass. I'm telling you, Troy Aikman's third down completion percentage is out of sight. They line up in a passing formation, and Aikman is back to pass. He's looking, looking. He's got a receiver wide open. He's still looking. Whoa, what's going on? And, ooh, Aikman's down. Oh, he had all the time in the world. You've got to ask yourself, what was this guy thinking? Brute, it's all part of the game. All right, guys, same play. The Professional Bowlers Tour on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Brute. Put it on and you're ready to play. Brute, it's all part of the game. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And prescription strength Lotrimin AF for athlete's foot. It's the killer cure. Have you ever seen the rolling hills, the countryside surrounding the capital city of Harrisburg? I hope you visit Pennsylvania. It's a beautiful state, especially springtime. Weather's a little unsettled, but inside it's full of cheering people. And here's Baker in the lead by four. Four seven. Well, we see the championship pair breaking down. What I mean by that, the oil dissipating somewhat from the heat, evaporation, some of it being carried down the lane. 
and the players are all drifting high. We're not seeing any light hits by design. They all have they have to make an adjustment with six frames to go. You either got to speed up the shot or move a little bit farther inside and allow for the hook. have been tougher the last two days, Chris. The difference between the field's score on Wednesday night, on Thursday night, and Friday night was 1,500 pins lower on Friday. So the lanes got tougher as the tournament went on. There's a welcome break for Tom Baker. 4-10, standing temporarily, gets a good break on the 10. First, though, let's look at this. Average leaders, Walter Ray uh, second. 222 and win all the money today, Chris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, those averages were established earlier in the year. The lanes have been much tougher lately. Back to my uh, question about the cost of a rack of pins. Well, there's actually, for us, there's 21 pins in a rack. It takes 10 that are setting down, 10 in the deck, and we have an extra one in so we don't have a delay in the championship round. But 10 pins today, brand new, cost approximately $120. Okay. There's Paige Pennington, Walter Ray's wife, who travels around uh, in their Teton trailer pulled by a freight line uh, truck. They love it. 500 cubic inches under the hood. Well, Walter Ray is pulling a Norm Duke. He's going inside, outside, hook ball, straight ball, different changes. You see one guy who knows how to make the 710, a guy who was in the champion, in the top 24 this week. Mm. And Eugene McCune showed you how to make it by bouncing one out. Let's see if Walter can do it. Dave Lay drops to a uh, trailing of 14 pins. Spare for Baker shooting in the sixth frame of the title game. Get up. Oh. Two eight ten. Both players confused, Chris, and uh, I bowled in the tournament and had that same confusion myself. You make a slight move left to, to avoid going high, and all of a sudden the ball skates almost all the way to the back end. It's almost too tough to adjust for. There comes to a point where a, p a player cannot actually make a cerebral and physical move to adjust to the strike line. This is a, just a little bit out of hand time. Okay, that's the second open frame for Tom Becker. Walter Ray has two. Next Saturday at 3 Eastern and Pacific, 2 Central on ABC Sports, it's the Greater Detroit Open, where last year Doug Kent won his first PBA title. Pro Bowlers Tour next Saturday, right here on ABC. Adeline DiBiase, our hostess there. Walter Ray, it's his 96th appearance on television. Get a 3-6. Well, the players can't adjust if they don't know what to do. I mean, these guys have all the shots, and when they have that whimsical look on their face saying, what should I do? Obviously, there's something you can do, but there's nothing that indicates exactly what to do. You're going to see this kind of result. It's a little bit different than a golf hole, which we're going to watch a little bit of the Jack Nicholas Memorial later on, Chris, but... You know, you can see the golf hole. I mean, you're a pretty good golfer. If you got 150 yards, the wind's blowing, there's water, whatever, you kind of know the shot. Here, these guys are guessing when it gets this tough. Match up for grabs. All even, three frames left. Whew. 
three six two. You don't get it out quite enough because it's dead hooks. You got too far, it doesn't even think about hooking. <laughs> well, I can't understand him, and I'm sure the pins don't. Well, he's talking. He, listen, I'd be, I'd be talking to myself too. Hmm. Eighteen thousand bucks at stake. Chris's lanes are prepared for the action. You're right, Chris. Um, obviously, it's it's somewhat equal for both players, although they're they're guessing a little bit. Baker with that uh, determined look on his face. He wants the title. Walter Ray gets a lot of shots at him. Baker, 42 years old, trying to maximize it. And that puts him out for a 13 time lead. And that was a strike in the eighth frame. Mm. Biggest shot the Bakes thrown in two years. When he took the AC Delco Classic, he just ran over everybody. Had a huge final game in the 270s. No contest. Right now, he's fighting for his life fighting for his ninth title, a strike right here would put him in the driver's seat. Okay. Yeah. So it's beginning to look like next week our first match will feature Walter Ray Williams and Tom Baker in the King of the Hill. Well, Walters has a little something to say about it as you see sure. the normal calm Tom Baker Oh, 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 I got money written on that shot. He has put the onus on Walter Ray. Walter Ray has a possible 189 if he strikes out. That has just gone to 178. You can just about get the crown ready for Tommy Baker. Walter Ray Williams Jr., if he spares and strikes out 178, all that Tommy Baker has to do is show up. Remember, Walter Ray won the return of a King of the Hill match against Norm Duke. If, if Walter doesn't strike on this ball, Chris, Bake's got the match locked. He doesn't have to do a doggone thing. Just throw it down the middle. Well, Walter ends up with his 29th second place finish. Wow. He cannot win this match. 167 is the really best he can do enough. for Tommy Baker. It's a lock. Imagine that greatness, 23 titles in 29 seconds. Evans. needs five pins on the first ball. This one will be just right down. No chance of going in the channel. Hello, champ. All right. Last win in 1996 at the AC Delco Classic Buffaloes. Tom Baker over Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Athlete's foot. It's a predator made up of many types of fungus that eat your feet alive. But there's a potent weapon that doesn't just cure some, it kills them all. Lotrimin AF, the killer cure. Lotrimin AF, the brand doctors recommend most. Full prescription strength medicine, Lotrimin AF is so powerful, it doesn't just kill some causes, it kills them all. Lotrimin AF, the killer cure. This is a Disney Music Collection. This is Woody's. And this is my McDonald's. Where you can get one of three Disney CDs or cassettes for under $4. When you buy a Happy Meal or any large sandwich. Like a quarter pounder with cheese. You'll get great Disney songs. Hakuna Matata. Cruella de Vil. Song from the new Hercules movie. And McDonald's would donate money. To Ronald McDonald House Charity. This is the Disney Music Collection. This is really good music. Oh, where do you want this? Hey now, <laughs> I ordered a new copier. This is better than new, my friend. 
Allow me to demonstrate. Mm. Oh, what do we have here? Oh. Enlarges, too. Mm. Oh, even Kool-Aid. <laughs> I'll take it. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. That was close. I didn't think I could shove this baby through. In the Harrisburg Open, this is the way the money is distributed. The champion, Tom Baker, 18, Walter Ray, 9,500 plus the 10,000 and winning the King of the Hill match. So he and Tom will meet one week from today in Taylor, Michigan in the Greater Detroit Open. Right now, uh, down on the lanes, you see the King of the Hill today, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. And on the right, the Harrisburg champion. Let's give them both a big round of applause. As Gary Bauer, president of the ABC North Lanes, on the right, and Earl Berger, general manager of ABC North Lanes, have the checks, and there is one trophy, and that is for the Buffalo Kid, Tom Baker. Yes. Yeah. Whoa! So we look forward, as I mentioned a moment ago, that they will meet one week from today in Detroit. Tom Baker from Buffalo, Walter Ray Williams Jr. from Stockton, California, in that showboat hotel and casino, King of the Hill. The final score today, 200 to 166. Coming up next, except on the West Coast, the Memorial Tournament, sponsored by...